So let's look at how we can use drift in Ableton Live to produce an atmospheric or drone synth with some very simple controls that can be used to manipulate the sound and also the possibility to randomize presets to create unexpected and new soundscapes presets if you like which can then be saved with the rack um, okay let's have a quick listen first then I'll explain how the rack works and finally at the end how the rack can be put together quite quickly with an ABC. Okay, so I have here a very slow tempo, 20, a single note playing, a D2 playing for one bar, effectively round and round it goes. That's the only MIDI signal I'm sending to the rack. So we can close that, that's what's going on here. Um, the rack itself is very simple. We have uh, a drift synth inside an instrument rack with a series of macros which have been mapped to various parameters within drift and a reverb at the back here and one LFO this is also partly mapped a little bit of chorus is mapped to the rack and the real trick to it or the key to it is that we're controlling here inside the reverb the freeze function with this LFO. So you can see the freeze is now activated. When we come round one and a half bars, the freeze will be deactivated, activated. So we can set with the LFO, here now it's activated again. We can set here with the LFO, maybe if I just close the reverb, you'll see, we'll see the rate here. I can set here the rate at which we're grabbing a freeze of the audio or the reverb effectively so here we've set it to three quarters of a bar one bar so every one bar now we will grab the audio all we're doing then is with some modulation in in drift it's altering the sound so that every time it's grabbed we have a new atmosphere being grabbed and then the modulations within drift generate a new sound while 
the grab is taking as taking place or playing back the grabbed audio and when it then releases the grabbed audio we have a new sound and then a new grabbed audio this way we can build up these atmospheres and and drone like effects so i can set this to a very long period when it doesn't grab audio i can set this up to what here 32 bars but it'll freeze and stay with that freeze you can still alter the the sound but it'll have a frozen reverb effect over the top um, or we can set it to a shorter range two or three bars or we can set it quite quickly it's constantly grabbing new reverb new reverb tails and holding them I find something around two or three bars oh it's you know it's, it's all open to interpretation and yeah and that's it really that's what that's what's going on the mapping of drift allows us to not only randomize well maybe I should explain that the, the random function you can actually set let's turn this down a second you can set within the instrument rack some we'll get into this into the build some of the macros can be excluded from the randomization I, I always found this it's quite useful to not randomize pitch too much um, I've not randomized here the reverb so that we have a constant reverb um, what else um, this one here the drone that's not randomized that's set to on you can turn it off yourself manually if you want that just turns off the reverb tail by deactivating the LFO so what once it's played it'll no longer freeze but yeah so effectively some of these macros are, are, are set up so that they're excluded from the randomization and this allows you then when you randomize to not change too much you're going to change your reverb settings etc and it gives you a little bit more control and a little bit more um what's the word uh a little bit more certainty about what's going to happen with the sound anyway let's look at how it's put together this all goes quite quickly uh let's have a look So firstly you're going to need an instrument rack, you can find instrument instrument racks here. As uh, always I'll use my old one because it gives me the macro settings here. Um, we'll need a version of Drift, so let's get Drift in here. The, the actual setup of the rack is very quick, but the settings, uh, some of them are quite specific. So I'll make a screenshot of all the, the mappings here once I've got them up and I'll put that at the end of the video so you can just look at that and set up your macros to the, the way I've set them up if that's what you want or you can define your own of course. Um, we're going to need in the audio effects we're going to need an LFO and the reverb. Uh, so we'll just drop the reverb between the LFO and the drift. Okay, so let's close this for a second. We'll set up the LFO. We're going to need 100% here and musical quantization here. Uh, I have a square. And then this, it would be nice if we could map it to the freeze directly, but it just doesn't like that. So to get around that, what we're going to do is map that here. Oh, sorry, we're going to map that here to this macro, but so we have to set the macro first. So we map this here, the freeze function, to our macro. And then once we have that, we can now map the macro, excuse me, map the LFO to the macro. Now that is controlling this here. 
and then we set this to zero. There we go. And we can now see that the freeze is activating every time we get a new flank on the square here, on and off. One bar we're set to at the moment. You could leave it at 127, it just inverts the, the phase of the square wave. But okay, that's set up. Now we can set up the reverb quite quickly. I had this set to 150, larger reverb. And the dry wet, 25, we'll, we'll map this anyway, that's going to be mapped. And the decay, I had uh, quite a long decay, but we're going to map these anyway, but I had this set to 20. And the final setting, I had a, a high cut, excuse me, a low cut here. Just I said about a thousand hertz, something like just to trim off the, the reverb from the bass. But you can set this up however you want, of course, your your choice. Um, so let's set up drift and do a little bit of mapping. Perhaps we could uh, actually we'll map. First of all, we will map the reverb because we can get those done. Reverb decay. We map that one here. And the reverb dry wet. We'll map that one as well. And then we have, let's close that. We can do the LFO. The LFO, LFO freeze rate is basically the rate of the LFO. We'll map that here. And that's all done. Now we have control over the LFO. And we have control over our, our reverb. So, so I had this set to 20 and it's around 25 or something like that. Okay, so that's done. These we can close now and drift we can concentrate on. Let's get the drift mapped. Um, I have here, and we'll come out to that one second. I have this activated here, the cycling envelope here. So we need to set that first before we go into the mapping. Anything else we need to do before I think that's okay. So I only have the attack here mapped. Um, let's map that here. And this had a setting 0 to 60. That's okay. 60 seconds. So they had the attack mapped. I also have the the filter that so the frequency here that's mapped and the resonance here I have mapped as well and the low pass resonance I've actually adjusted this down from 101 to 80 so it's not too when we do the randomization I don't want to have really high resonance values because that can create some terrible sounds. So some beautiful ones as well, but quite often some terrible ones. So I have that set low. Um, what else do we have here? We have these macros here. We have the oscillator one. Wave. We also have oscillator one shape. And then we have oscillator one modulation amount, which is this one here, which I've set to LFO. And we'll have that here. And then finally, we have oscillator two wave. So we can select the, the wave here. So they're all mapped. We've done the reverb decay and all those things. Frequency modulation, the frequency modulation we find down here. So we're going to map that. Okay, that's set. And then I had some XYZ, which were combinations of macros, just to add some variety to the sound. So in the X, I had the, the rate for the cycling envelope. Map that here. I also had the tilt. 
on X and the hold. On the Y, I had the LFO rate here for the this LFO. The noise gain as well, sometimes we introduce some noise. And finally, the drift here, which adds some randomness into the tuning of the whole uh, synthesizer. We'll put that on Y as well. On the Z, I had the high pass frequency here. The LFO waveform. These are just all choices, as I say, here the LFO waveform that I've made. I thought would be useful. You can make your own choices, of course. Set it up how you like. And finally, we have the oscillator to detune here. Now, I think that's everything. As I say, there's some settings. So I'll punch them in, but I'll leave a screenshot at the end. Um, so we have freeze rate, drone on off. I haven't mapped the drone on off which is basically this LFO switch here. So that one there, you can map that. Zero, if I come out of here, zero switches off the LFO and value is higher than 64, turn on the LFO. Okay, so that's all maps there. Right, so, well, let's put the values in I had here, so that's the same. One, two, seven, just checking my list. So I had the low pass frequency, I didn't let that go so low, I only let it go down to 100 hertz. Um, the frequency resonance we've already set. That's okay. Checking my list here. 17. Okay, so the cycling envelope rate I also set at 0.6, a very low rate. So we just give a little bit of flavor to the sound. I didn't want the cycling envelope to be too high, but I say that's my choice. You can choose what you like. Um, and the drift amount, I also had this set at 50% maximum so that the sound didn't get too out of tune, that one there, and finally the oscillator to detune, I only wanted a small amount available, and so this one here I had at 0 0.07, so a very small detune can be generated when we when we do the randomization, so that's all set up, I'll, I'll, say I'll leave a screenshot of that at the end, you can check that, then finally what we have to do is turn off some of these, uh, it's already done on my one, exclude this one from the Macro randomization, the drone as well, exclude that one, the reverb, exclude that, and the reverb dry wet level, exclude that one as well. I think the rest were all okay. Yes, and the freeze rate was okay. So that's it. it. It's all set up. So hopefully if we put our sound back on, I'm not sure what's going to arrive here. We'll try it out. That's pleasant. Let's try a new one. So this one here controls the rate of the LFO as well. Okay, so there you go. Um, I hope this is useful. Perhaps leave a comment below if you like it, whatever. Um, my name's Andrew. Thanks for getting this far in the video and enjoy the rest of your day.